They're going in the water. Oh, look at oh. me. Don't look at the fight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you excited about? Bella Bess? Yeah. Might actually see these things. They didn't walk up to us last time. You got a map? We have. You excited about the polar bears? Uh, this is a bit of a giveaway though. <laughs> I'm hoping it's not an upcharge. Sign outside to polar bears and peak wildlife park. Should we go straight over to them? I don't know if that's a good idea or not. We can do. I don't know if it's going to be packed over there, but let's take a look. Oh, there's the dreaded tapir. We missed him last time. He was hiding. Let's see if the red squirrels are still there. They're quite rare. Tapirs again. That means we're guaranteed to see tapirs if we go at 3 p.m. Yeah, <laughs> There's no way they're not coming out for food. Seek a deer. You might not find it, but you have to seek it. Oh. I'm on it now. Seriously. <laughs> I don't know if it comes through on camera. That polar bear looks so airbrushed. Have you seen the polar bear on the map? <laughs> there is no way it's that silky. Is that even a real polar bear? That's what I'm going to ask next. The eye doesn't look real either. Walk with the animals. Upgrade to an annual pass and we'll take today's entry price off the price. 20% off pizzas and hot drinks, 10% in a gift shop. Bubble walk. I thought I said Bee Blaze for a minute. African village. Gonna brave the goats this time. Share it at Peak Wildlife Park. This one's following me. This could be a headbutt situation. You seen the sign that says, by the way, these headbutt? It's literally right there after you get in. We were about to get in the last time, and two of them were properly going for it in the middle of like, the, uh, the children's farm area. And all the kids were like, Jesus. <laughs> Mere cats about. Hello said this last time we came but the exquisite um, placing of the meerkats that opposite the warty pigs which are very similar to warthogs so it's like Timon and Pumbaa oh he's staring at me he knows they padlocked the tortoise but it can get out the bottom if Jack is inside it's raining if he's outside, it's sunny. If it's white, it's snowing. Upside down, windy. Jumping up and down, earthquake. Gone. Take shelter. He's in there. I don't know if you can see him on camera. He's gradually making his way out. Let's see what we can see. They're out and about. Oh, his flippers are shaking. I know, this was like always quivering. Oh, well, there we go. The tunnel. The murky waters. Oh, it's like Daniel Lemmings or something, huh? Green water. And right over there are some TP things, so we're going to take a look at those later, but... Nice and quiet at the moment. Let's take a look around here while it's quiet. This is where you can view the penguins up top. Maybe they're going to get fed. That water is really murky. Maybe it's the rain. Danger deep water. So if the penguins are drowning, we could throw in that ring. About to go and see penguins. Um, yeah, let's get it out of my hands. Deep water. Want to make a new friend? Don't run or shout, take your time. Penguins can be shy, but they are friendly. But warning, they bite. Sanitize hands outside. This is the airlock, but I can still breathe. No food or drink. I actually thought that was a camera because someone's turned the sign sideways. Quite a long time. 
time they might come over. I think it's because, yeah, maybe the baby one's shedding the coat. I think they're waiting for food. They always remind me, do you remember the Adams Family, but the original series of the Adams Family with the granddad and he had hair, but six out on the sides. That's what they remind Are you talking about the monsters? Daddy. That's the one. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Hello, little one. It's just really warm. You said how cold it is, huh? Oh, you said monks in Gibraltar, you've got to worry about it. When they write in shows, you've just got to get rid of them. There's some sharp looking teeth. Oh. <laughs> Oh, press this for a prize. Beep. The capital of Iceland is Reykjavik. I win. If you like your fingers, don't let them get bitten. No food or drink. Hello. Oh, cute. oh my gosh. I never get to hold the baby one, but you are really cute. Oh my god, there's the baby Hello. What do you do? I love the lashes. The lashes are longer than mine, right? Am I allowed to stroke it or not? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. 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 It's really soft. Just chilling. All of these can't moonwalk. They just can't. Have you got the one where he was um, doing this to his tail? Yeah. Hello. Hello. There you go. Oh, you're cute. Look at the look at the lashes. That's what I said. The lashes are longer than mine. Oh no, you can't have that. <laughs> He's looking for food, but I don't have any. Hello. Hey, dude. Yeah, can't eat the laces. Maybe they didn't have wallaby food last time we came. That's why they're suddenly perked up. Yeah. It's like, hey, is anyone going to eat food here? <laughs> Did you get? Are you filming? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. I want to do the whole nature. <laughs> Doing it a little bit. We're on the hunt for Red October or Red Squirrel, but it's tapir today. But let's go see the polar bears at play. It's an extender. And Andy's got one as well. Hello everyone, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I'm not sure how long this sound system will last, I do apologise. So if it does cut short, I'm going to be here pretty much all day. So feel free to call me, ask me any questions you want about the bears. Um, and I'll, hopefully it'll work. Um, so welcome to Peak Wildlife Park everybody. My, um, my name is Yaz um, and I'm here with our three lovely polar bears. Um, now you might have noticed they are quite a curious little bunch um, and we have three of them here with us. We have Hope at the back who is mum. Um, so Hope was actually born in France and then we have her two young boys. Now they don't look very young, they are absolutely huge um, but they still depend on their mum quite a lot and they are called Nanook and Nori. Now they have been settling in really, really well. We've had them just over a month. We did get them from Orsa, um, a predator park in Sweden, which was sadly shutting down. Um, so we decided we'd help out and build them this lovely new habitat here at Peak. Now behind me, you can see they've got one part of their enclosure, which they've been playing in the water. You might have seen them if you've been up this morning. They have been playing outside quite a lot. And just on, side the other, um, on the other side of the mound behind you, that is a secondary enclosure. Um, it is complete, however, when we got the bears, we realised they didn't really bother the trees too much. So what we've done is taken the opportunity to plant lots and lots of trees in there. Um, so we just need to put the gate back on, and then that will be ready for them to go into in a few weeks' time, which will be nice and lovely, and it'll give them two completely different habitats. One that's a lot more treed, 
and potentially we might do a little bit more landscaping in there and create a few more mounds for them to hide on. So we're looking forward to letting them into there. However, at the moment they are quite happy in here and um, playing around. You can see they've got lots of toys to play with, lots of areas for them to roll around in. Now, polar bears are highly intelligent animals. They do need lots and lots of mental stimulation. Um, so how we do that here at the park is just one of the easiest ways is just by varying our routine. Now, because polar bears are so clever, they can predict what we're going to do. They learn our routine very, very quickly. So we need to make sure that we're changing things up every single day. Now, that's one of the reasons why our bears don't have a set feed time. If we fed them at the same time every day, they would be sat waiting for us. And we don't want that to happen. Obviously, in the wild, their fears are going to come along at the same time every day, especially with them being predators. They're going to have to go out and hunt that. It is different for other animals such as maybe lemurs. They spend lots of their time foraging food in the trees and the plants, so they can pretty much eat any time they want. However, that's not the case for polar bears. Now, as I said, they are very, very intelligent and they do need lots of stimulation. So we do have um, lots and lots of toys for them to play with. Their favourite thing at the moment is that lovely big raft behind me floating in the water, that big red thing. Now, that took one of our keepers weeks to make and thankfully it floats because we weren't sure if it was going to float until we put it in the water. And Nanook has been hogging it completely and um, he won't really let the other bears near it. Um, so if his brother goes over and Nanook starts playing with it, he then decides it's the most interesting thing in the world. So they kind of are like normal brothers, don't really like to share things. And as well as that, they do like lots of um, different toys. We've got a big um, container over there, but if you see that big blue container there, they have crushed that. Um, so it shows how strong they are and it kind of fills up with the water a bit. So we can't unfortunately get out of the water until the bears pull it out for us because it's just really heavy and really hard to get out of the water. So I think we'll leave that raft with them until they pull it out for us because again, very heavy and they are incredibly strong. Now we do have a lovely complex environment as well. We've got a big cave for them. We've got some mounds, we've got some wood chip, which kind of replicates snow. And in that one in the top corner over there where I'm pointing, you might see some little holes in there. That's because they like to sleep in that. And we do did see one of them the other day covering his brother in wood chip as he was trying to dig a more comfortable hole for him to lie in. And what we'll do is we'll just go turn that back every now and then and that just make it a little bit more different for them. And they like to play and jump on it as well, especially the boys. You flip it up to a big pile and they come running out and they'll just jump right on it and squash it all back down. Now we also have this lovely big pool here, which they absolutely love. It's six metres deep. They can fully submerge and dive right down to the bottom where it's going to be nice and cool. And also it's really good for their joints. They are absolutely massive, as you might have noticed. And the boys are only half grown. They're going to double in size. So that water helps take a lot of pressure off their joints. And it's really good for them. And also it's great fun. They absolutely love it, especially when they start going in there. And they can spend hours swimming around in the water. Now, if you were here a few minutes ago, you might have noticed me throwing some food in for our polar bears. And I'm sure it's probably quite shocking as I was throwing carrots in for them. Now, these bears do have a very seasonal diet here at the park and also in the wild. So in the Arctic right now, it's not actually very icy at all. The ice does melt, believe it or not. So that time of year when there's not much ice, there's not going to be very many seals for these bears to hunt, so they're going to forage. Now they are primarily predators, but they are bears as well. Bears like to eat berries, all things like that. So this time of year in the wild, these guys would kind of be foraging through vegetation. They'll eat eggs and they'll eat berries, anything else they can find, and even carcasses that might have passed away, they'll forage on them as well, even male carcasses. So this time of year, our bears aren't really interested in meat at all. I did throw some meat in there for them this morning, just up there, you might be able to spot it. At the moment, they're not too interested in eating it, they prefer to play with it. So I am sorry if you see anything that gruesome later on. It's the best thing for them to play with, we can give them toys, but they love stuff like that to play around with. And they do, at the moment, get around 20 kilograms of veg a day, which is a lot. And believe it or not, one of their favourite things is lettuce. They absolutely love a lettuce, an iceberg lettuce, they float in the water, they're really fun to play with. Um, but they do need a lot of that to get that, um, all the calories they need. So that's what they're on at the moment. So we'll probably start feeding them a lot more meat when it comes into winter. As in the wild, when the ice comes back, there's more seals to hunt. So we're just trying to copy their seasonal diet, which is really good for them. And also just helps them with their mental stimulation as well. So you can see they've got that lovely, lovely white fur. We've got Hope just sat there, very lovely, posing for you all there. So you can get some lovely photographs. I think Nano and Nari are a bit jealous of the microphone. Maybe they want to do a bit of a talk. Um, but this fur is actually clear. It just kind of reflects the light. And believe it or not, underneath all that lovely fur, their skin is actually black. 
And also, if you notice their tongues, I think Hope was just sticking her tongue out then. There we go. Very good girl, isn't she? Um, that is also black. Now that's to help them um, to prevent getting sunburn on their tongue, basically. If the bears do get a little bit warm, they'll kind of pant like a dog. They do remind me of dogs quite a lot, actually. A little bit cheeky, very nosy. Always like to know what you're up to. So when it's really hot, they can pant to cool down and their tongue isn't going to get sunburned. So it's a really, really clever adaptation. Now, as well as that, you might also notice they've got the cutest little tails and the tiniest little ears, and that's just to help them prevent getting frostbite. Obviously, out there in the Arctic, it does get very, very cold. I think it can get down to about minus 40 degrees. Um, so that does help them keep nice and cool. Um, sorry, sorry, does it help? It stops them getting frostbite, essentially, because they need to make sure that they're not going to get them. The smaller they are, you'll notice that in other animals, such as snow leopards, which live up in the Himalayan mountains, they've got smaller ears as well. So it does really, really help with that. Now, bears do have quite, these bears do have quite small eyes as well, and that's just to help reduce the risk of UV damage. When it's sunny out there, the sun is out all year round. It can go days where the sun doesn't set. And obviously with that, all that white snow, that can really damage their eyes. So that's just how they've adapted to that. Now, they've got very, very fluffy feet as well. Um, you probably won't be able to see the underside of their feet today, but we do health checks on their feet. We get to put their feet up, make sure everything's clean in between. And they've got lots and lots of fluff between their toes, which is going to help keep them warm and also makes them pretty much silent. Um, once I've done the talk and the bears are walking around, you won't hear them in the house when we're in there. They can really sneak up on you, and they like to do that sometimes. They're very, very clever, and they'll do a little jump at the fence, but it does keep them nice and quiet. Now, unfortunately, bear numbers are declining in the wild, and we really want to help with that here at the park. We are working with a charity, um, the Polar Bear International Conservation, and we are trying to help raise awareness initially um, to make sure that we can help safeguard these guys' future. Now, the ice is melting at an alarming rate, which does affect the bears. They are adapting. They have actually started to learn to hunt different animals. They've started to hunt reindeer, which isn't normally a thing for bears. However, it does mean they are having to spend a lot more time swimming around in the water because the ice is melting. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do lots of fundraising, trying to raise awareness of how we can actually help these magnificent animals out there in the wild. So the ways we can help is trying to reduce our carbon footprint. You can get online and figure out your carbon footprint calculator and there are small changes you can make to help reduce that. You can also use your car lot less frequently and even things as simple as recycling, it does help. I know you probably hear it absolutely everywhere, but it does make such a big impact. And even if you're not doing it perfectly, even if you're just doing a little bit, it does go a very long way and it doesn't help just the polar bears, it helps plenty of other animals. So thank you for listening. I'll leave the talk there, um, but if you do have any questions, like I said, please do come and chat to me. I will be here for most of the day. We've got Nana and Nari sat there right at the fence being very, very nosy and Hope just sat behind. Um, so yeah, um, like I said, any questions, please do feel free to come and chat to me. Our next talk of the day is at 12 o'clock with our lovely Humboldt penguins just a bit further into the zoo down that way. So thank you very much, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. They've got like tables themed to outer space, and this is where you do up your shoelaces. Got a little thing for it. This is it. This is where you do up your shoelaces, everyone, just before you go and see the polar bears. We've got the space tables. It looks like it's rained really harshly just on this spot here. Did you get any rain when you were coming? No. It's probably coming from the west then. But it just looks like it's rained here and nowhere else. Being drilled went past me doing about 80 and with aqua playing and he was like that across the road. I was like, right off. Please give way to oncoming traffic. Anakin, I've got the high ground. <laughs> Last time we came here, it was sunny and we, we tried to get something to eat and the queue was coming out of that place all the way. Yeah, that wasn't open before, that was being built. That's oh, new, is it? Yeah. That looks pretty uh, loaded with people as well. Let's see nature. Running water. <laughs> They're going in the water. They're drinking the water. Whoa. 
milk with squirrels. She's not going to get out, is she? We have forever of them, though. This is like some challenge out of the Crystal Maze. This big booth. Does it hit capacity? That does not look happy. But I'm happy I've seen one. <laughs> what are these? The They've literally stolen them from Chester. All these oh, animals look like they, they want to escape, yeah. which I understand, but yeah. it, oh, it's glaringly one, obvious here. Yo, Hello. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Squirrel monkeys. Oh, yeah. Using confidence that I've got a coat on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you. <laughs> 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 dried up the egg. It's the attack. Attack of the clones. They all look the same. Oh my gosh! What did we do? What did we do to deserve this? What you got? They're all out now. Oh, they're fighting. Oh, altercation. Oh. Don't look at me. Oh. Don't look at the fight. Nice. It's oh. <laughs> a big white bunny. He just looks so chill, but I don't want to upset him. He's so soft in his neck. Hello, little one. Is it softer than the wallabies? It's on par. You can't have a stroke yourself. <laughs> Daddy, come stroke it. It's actually. Hello. I, just, I really hope one it's of them. It's warm. It's really warm. Imagine what the life in the hot weather. What's hot weather now? It's I know, but like really hot weather. Like Hello. Sunny. What you do? Oh, we're gonna get a photo of you doing that. Okay. Yeah, that's what you do, little one? I like my skin away, you got the ears. I like how you talk to them like the pigs. Well, pigs are related to rabbits, aren't they? Guinea pigs. Yeah. They are. A guinea pig is called Caneco de Indias in Spanish, which is Indian rabbit. Hello. He looks like he might go for me, you know. Make great, I could make great footage. It's like probably like one of your French girls. Look at the leg out. They've actually got quite long tails. Is he quite warm? Yeah. Just push yourself around. That's it. We'll speed it up, it'll be alright. Hey! <laughs> Little buzzy bee doing his thing. This is a lovely path. Reminds me of Lincolnshire. Are they rounded on the bottom then? I'm guessing. Can you spin it like a top? Yeah. <laughs> Might get injured. I will most likely get injured. Never mind. <laughs> Oh, they're not attached to the floor. You've been here right around. No idea. You don't. I'll go the other way. Just about naturally happens in the wild, so she'll just kind of tell us when she's on the <laughs> it 
rain so this cleared out so I can film it without any kids on it and if you'll see it almost looks you see the water vibrating just maybe down there with the vibration of the air oh there's some there as well push there's it loads down. of bubbles stuff of nightmares really I hope this isn't copyright music Three for two. Five for four. These look quite cool. Coughing it. Grow your own bacteria. Can it's not you? enough to cough, yeah. <laughs> Make your own slime. Gone overboard on the cable ties. Oh, it's raining. It is. So, what did you think of? Uh... Minus the weather, it's been lovely again. It's so nice favorite? to see the polar bears. The polar bears are definitely the highlight of it. Um, How's your umbrella? <laughs> my umbrella's broken. <laughs> Broken as many as my age. So what did you want to say? So, uh, no, stop, stop, what do you stop. want to say? Oh, yeah. we'll what's, you. Been your what's been your oh. favourite bit? Uh, yeah, polar bears were pretty decent, weren't they? We got to get closer than Yorkshire Wildlife Park. Definitely, and that's the highlight of it. Yeah. But I like my polar bears. Yep. Yeah. So we'll see you in the review. That's for now. We're gone. So I'm gonna get run over. Bye.